hopefully that you are doing great. So in this lesson, I want to show you a very interesting uh, feature that we can do in the future. So we, when you run some test script and uh, most of the time that uh, you have the, you know, um, a need that you, you want to capture a screenshot from the mobile uh, screen, not only for the purpose, but maybe for uh, reporting purpose or something like that. Okay, so when you can capture the screenshot uh, at your test script, uh, it's very awesome because it will help us to debug easier if there will be something failed or you just simply stuck to the report in the future and that can make your report easier to read and see uh, what's going on at the time you test the feature, right? So now just try to, under the API bucket here, you create a new Java class with the name Taking Screenshot. And by the way, sorry for any background noise around. You create a new main method, okay? So you list out all of the steps that you want to do because um, at the beginning step, you need to list out all of the steps and then it will avoid you to have any mistakes, okay? So you need to uh, create a session first. Then after that, the target uh, the target screen that I want to show you this feature is this screen. So that means we need to click on the form again. So in this case, we will navigate to form a screen. Then we can try to do something around before we capture the screenshot with, uh, because if we go here and we capture the screenshot immediately, it's uh, some kind of very basic, right? So we will try to simul uh, simulate the real uh, situation that we will do something on the screen first, and then we will capture the screenshot after that. So you navigate to the form screen. So in this case, you can, uh, Maybe you will switch the, we call it uh, something like click on toggle person if is a, uh, if is is off. Okay, so we will put some logic here and then we will click on drop down uh, menu. Uh, we will select the, uh, I think I can combine two step here, click on drop down menu and then select the first session, uh, the first option, okay? So this will be the first uh, option. And then finally, we are taking a screenshot here, okay? <clears throat> so I think everything that you want to do, we just copy some place and then paste here, except for this logic and this one, right? So we try to create uh, an FPM session here and the type inside should be more for uh, the type inside should be more for element here. We call it as FPM driver equal FPM driver standard class term, uh, get FPM driver, <coughs> excuse me, get FPM driver here. And now we want to navigate to the form screen. So we will uh, try to declare mobile element here. It's the forms uh, lace for like you only did this before equal IBM driver. And I want to find the element by using accessibility ID. In this case, I will put the value at forms here. After that, I will do the form lace for to click to navigate to the form screen. Okay. So now on this screen, I want to check whether the toggle button is on or off. So if it is off, I will click on on. Uh, but if it's already on, I will do nothing. So if you go back to handle toggle uh, button here, we have uh, two elements. The first thing is the, uh, let me see the form here and the toggle button. Uh, this one, this is the toggle button value and the text to display. So the thing here is if we switch to uh, to the right, so by, by default, it's all already on already, okay? So if we click on this one, it will be off, okay? 
So we need to get this one out. And for example, we uh, the tag is something click to turn the switch on. So that means we will click. But if it is something, if it is something like click to turn the switch off, that means it's already on, right? So we don't need to do anything. So first thing first, I need to copy this mobile uh, switch element here, or you can name as a toggle element, okay? So this is the element. <clears throat> and then I will copy the tag label here as well. I put it here, right? So now we have the switch element and switch tag element. So if, let me try to define a final uh, string uh, in this case um, is I view okay so final I think should be final pullings uh, is switch on okay equal I will get the tag so should be switch tag element here I will get the uh, Tag here, and I will check whether it's a equal. So we use equal, and then we can push here. Click to turn the switch on or off. Let me try to grab the value first. So if this is on, so this means we will get something. Click to turn the switch off, right? Switch off here. So that means if the tag is equal this one. Is switch on will be false well, value. Okay, so now if uh, the switch is, is switch on, you see this one. So if it is not on, we will do something like switch element here. We will click. So is it already on? So this means false here. Uh, this on, yeah. If it's the up here, it will return false, right? So actually, we view. Uh, let me see. The false here is on already. So if it's the up, that means equal. This will be false, and it will not execute this one. Okay. And now after that, we will click on the drop down menu, and in this case, uh, we can go back to handle drop down option here and then we can copy this one okay uh taking screenshot here we paste it here let me try to delete this one and i can delete this one as well so first option click and now finally i want to take the screenshot okay so okay i think you need one more uh library uh you need to use the apg uh, dot common dot io because uh, this one has uh, you know some convenience methods and then we can handle files easier um, maybe apg commands here yeah and just this one so this is the one commands io here and then you click on the latest one. In this case, it's 2.8, right? And then you just click the trial file. And then you import to the project like you did before when we add some dependency there. So as the lesson uh, related to the, the, the Maven project or something like that, I will share you in detail how to handle dependency easier. But now just put it in that way, OK? So after you have that, you will call something. The first thing, you need to declare the file. So the file here actually will come from java.io first. So I want to declare something like form, uh, form screen, form screen base data, base city for data, because it will return for us uh, uh, city for base city for data. Okay, so now focus here. So first thing first, you need to uh cache the apium driver here you put the apium driver inside okay and then you cache the apium driver to a class test uh test screenshot here okay 
And then after that, you will call the get screenshot address, get screenshot as the output type is uh, found here. You see, output type dot found here. So the output type will come from uh, selling your own library here. Okay. After that, we want to declare the, the path for the file to save. In this case, I will declare a string here, and it should be something from screen file path. Uh, I will use the system here. You see the system come from java.length here. And then I will try to get the property with the name user dot director here, and I will try to add something like screenshot. I already have the screen screenshot folder here, but in the case you don't have that, it you automatically, uh, you know, create the folder for you if you don't have that. Okay, screenshot, and then I will put the file name. In this case, I will try to put something simple like, you know, from uh, screen dot png here. So at the time we learn about the tech ng framework in this course, I will share you how to handle the distinguished file name later. But now you just put something like that for demonstration purpose first, okay? So after we have the path here, now we use the file, you still from you see abg dos commands dos io here and then you give the methods copy file so you see here if you open the copy file we have some over in methods but in this case we will put the first thing at the form screen space truth here and then we tell what is the, the path to to save uh this truth okay uh file utils, copy files, and then this is the path. Uh, let me see. Uh, should be uh, file uh, dot, it should be new file, and then I put it here. Let me see. Uh, this is a handle exception. Okay, I forgot to put it in a try catch block because when you try to interact with any file system, you actually need to put it in the a try catch or you you can throw something in the main methods here. For example, if you move the cursor here and you try to add the exception here, it, we will have something like throw IO exception here, right? But in this case, I don't want to do that. So I will put it in a try cache block, okay? So let me try to put a try uh, block first here. Enter, I move this one uh, inside. Let me try to delete this one. And then I will put a cache block here. In this case, I want to catch the IO exception. So this is the exception, okay? And I will just try to e dot bring the trace outside here. <coughs> okay, new file. So this file from java.io again. Okay, so and then you input the, the path inside. Okay. Okay, I think we can run the test script. So before running, you need to make sure that you have Appium server started on port 4723. Okay. And now you click on the runs button here to select this one. Thank you. Screenshot dot main methods here. And then you just run it. Okay, let me try to open uh, the Appium server here to see what's going on. <clears throat> Okay, let me try to open the visor app as well. And then you can see on the device screen. <laughs> Sorry for the background noise around, okay? Uh, it's playing around. <clears throat> We're trying to open the socket to communicate with the device. Okay. So it click. Okay. And then finally, uh, we 
could see something you see respond to the client. After that, if you try to send us the page 64 data here and then we save it, okay? So everything is okay. Let's try to open the screenshot to make sure we have the latest so we can try to right click and reload from this. Now you open screenshot here. Uh, it seems there is something wrong. Uh, let me see from screen dot p and g here. Let me try to refresh again. Uh, here it is that's right the uh, ABI. So user dot dear screenshot from screen dot p and g. Uh, try to refresh here again. Uh, nothing wrong here, I think. Up, oh, sorry, I did. I didn't look at the control lock here. So yet you can see that we have a new pointer here. So let's see. Taking a screenshot and at line forty-five here. Oh, I think I found out the problem. I think I found out the problem. That's it because you see, get system property here. I forgot to close it here, right? And this one will return for the current user directory here, okay? After that, we need to uh, add something at the end here. That's it, why? Okay, so this one will get for us the current uh, user directory. If you put all of the things, something here inside, it will say that you know, uh, it cannot find out what is the property user does there, uh, and so on. Okay, so that's why it's you know it's failed. Now just run again, and I think this time it will be okay. Okay, just open the Appium server here. Uh, let me try to open the Visual app again for you. Yeah, it's done here. And then you can see the screenshot folder here with the screen here. You see, this is the screen. It's a uh, it capture from the test script. So let me try to summarize a little. Uh, as the step how we take a screenshot because for all the steps, I think you already knew how to do. So here, yeah, the first thing that you need to, um, you know, have a utility library, I think we can call it as dependency from common.apg.io, okay, because it contains some convenience methods for us to process with files system. So that's why we need to do. And the first thing that you need to declare a file uh, and just name it as uh, anything. Uh, for this case, I name it as from screen base city for data because actually it will return a base city for data for us. So first thing first, we need to cast the Appium driver to test screenshot class here and then we call the class get screenshot as then the output type from uh, Selenium. Again, we uh, select the type as file, okay? So now we can get the uh, we can declare the location where we need to set the files first by using system guest property. And in this case, you provide the user dot directory here. This will return for you the current directory. And then you can create a new folder here. You see screenshot and then you put the name at the end for the screenshot. After that, you put everything in a dry cache block if you don't want to throw the input output exception from the methods. So here we are, excuse me. So here we are using the file utils uh, class from command.apache.command.io uh, uh, here and we use the convenience function as the name copy file. So the first parameter is the data that you already capture from the screen. It's a base city for data, okay? And the second one that you create 
a new instance, a new file instance from java.io here, you see. And we will input the form screen uh, file back here. After that, if you capture the screenshot for you, so in case you don't have uh, the screenshot folder, it will automatically create one for you and uh, will create a new um, file under that folder, okay? So I think this is very much for this lesson. Uh, bye for now and see you in the next lesson.